the scene. It is three o'clock in the morning and there you lie in the imagined safety of your own bed. Listening. Is that a movement you hear downstairs? A servant perhaps whose duty drives him to check the silver even at this late hour. But no. It is something far more sinister. So you rise from your bed looking around yourself. And what do you see in the moonlight? A poker. Yes, the iron poker from your bedroom fireplace. Grasping it firmly in your hand, you proceed to the stairs and descend to the hall. There you stop and look around. All is silent. And then... Miss Boxer! Picture the scene. Uh, lunch, I think. Thank you, Mr. Jardine. Cut it out, Quatermass. What's the hurry? Warwick Jardine's on his way out, and I got on the wrong side of him when I sprayed his Daimler. Oh, well, he'll never get fungal rot. <laughs> or a shine on his paintwork. Come on. Mrs. Time. Miss Boxer. I'm sorry about the, um, you know. How much more of your professional attention may we look forward to? The blight's all but gone. Are you? Good. Here's a trick the rest of us use. Imagine him in women's underwear. Does it work for you? A bit too well. I've had to stop. <laughs> You're nearly done here. We've thinned out the infected leaves, sprayed to protect the rest, and there's not a lot more we can do. I've got a proposal I'd like to run by you. Tea shop in half an hour? Fraser! The buns are on me. It's just a little old place out in the country. It's been in the family since God was in short trousers. How big's the garden? Tiny. Tiny. And it's barely worth five minutes of your attention. Actually, I'm lying. It's quite huge. Oh, I don't know. Which gets you more interested? Do you know how hard it is to nail down a landscaper? Martin, just describe the problem. I want to put the Elizabethan garden back the way it was. But it's gone to pot. Could you take a look at it? Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll um, check our diary and let you know. I've been asking about you. You know your stuff, and you don't pad your overheads. Here's my number. I'll be home any time from nine on Friday. Why check the diary when there's nothing in it? It's bad business to seem too eager. Anyway, he's already dropping hints about our low overheads. Oh, I can't imagine what gave him that idea. <laughs> I've always fancied getting my hands on an Elizabethan garden. Yes, and uh, speaking of overheads, I've had an idea that could save us a ton of money this summer. What is it? Uh, if I just come out and tell you, you'll only say no. See, you've got your two sleeping compartments on opposite sides, mm -hmm. while the middle opens right out in good weather. Oh, I like this one. Have you been camping before? Oh, yes, in the brownies. That's great news. Well, just one more thing. What's that? Is there anywhere decent we can stay? <laughs> well, that depends on what you class as decent. Walls and a roof. <laughs> We've got bags of room. Oh, great. Right. Well, you're on. 
Uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Look forward to it. Bye. Slide poles into pole sleeves on outside of fly sheet. Brace pole and locate pole pins on pole end. Why don't you use the English translation? I'm sure it'll be perfectly clear when it's laid out on the ground. Ah, uh, here we are. Martin said we go left when we see a post box. And there it is. Martin not around during the week, Suzanne. Not with a class of 20 to teach. What, you work as well? Part-time. It's the only way to keep it all going. <laughs> we haven't had a holiday in five years. And the kids got second-hand bikes for Christmas. Isn't there an income from the estate? <laughs> Nowhere near enough. Oi, Toby, play nicely. I've had this all week. But go on, we'll find our own way to the garden. Come on, now, why can't you learn to share? <laughs> I ought to warn you, I've put Martin on lunch duty. <laughs> Why is that worth a warning? Well, it depends whether you're okay with caveman food. If he can't burn it, you'd better like it raw. <laughs> oh, Lord. This old print shows what it used to be like. Uh -huh. Every generation leaves its mark on the place. Martin wants this to be his. Why don't you leave us alone for a bit? Yeah, we'll just have a poke around and see what's what. OK, well, come and join us when you're done. It's going to take a bit more than a prune and a tidy. No, it's not quite as bad as it looks. The basic layout's still here. Oh, you are the biggest optimist I've ever known. What are you looking for? I rather fear that old sundial's long gone. Oh, but look at it. Won't it be something? It's been a building here. You can see the old foundations. It'll take more than the two of us to get those dug out. Mm, we'll have to get in some extra labour. Mm. Big, hunky blokes with picks and shovels. And a couple of deck chairs. Deck chairs? So we can sit and watch. <laughs> Pardon me. Were you sent to fetch us? Sorry we've taken so long. I don't even know who you are. I'm Jim. Laura Time, Rosemary Boxer. I would count it a great favor if you didn't mention that you'd seen me. Why? I'm not really supposed to be here. I've been banned from the property. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but you can't ask us to cover for you. We're guests here. I'll just go then. We bring meat from mighty Arga. <laughs> There's free ice cream for anyone who can take these scrounging dogs away from the tank. <laughs> A plant pathologist. That's right. Like Quincy of the Greenwood. If you like. Don't let him wind you up. No, 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 no. I'm intrigued. I'd like to know how you do a, a post-mortem on a tree. Thanks. With a chainsaw. Are you being serious? <laughs> you started this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you lived here all your life? Born here? 
Uh -huh. Went away. Mm -hmm. Came back. Now I'm in charge of the Lived and Trust. And the first girl I ever kissed. Ooh. But don't you dare tell the missus that. <laughs> Katie, are you all right? Thanks, I'm on call. Are you a doctor? Anesthetics. And I've heard all the jokes, thank you. <laughs> and what do you do? Book jackets. I'm an illustrator. Really? Would I have seen any? I don't know. Can you read? Chris? What? <laughs> Fern, that's a lovely name. Where did it come from? Mum's an old hippie. You wouldn't know it to look at her now. I don't know how to take that. I think you're very lucky. I know. If I'd been a boy, it would have been Bambi. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> See, there's another job half finished. Looks like you've been left with a builder's yard. It belongs to the odd job man. And he only comes back because we hide his tools. <laughs> I think Martin fell for you two because you'll live on the job till it's done. Oh, did you tell Martin about the man we saw? No. Um, Where was this? At the door in the walled garden. Yeah, see, he seemed a bit odd. He uh, asked us not to say that we'd seen him. He said his name was uh, Jim. Cousin Jim. What did he want? I don't know. He didn't make a lot of sense. I've already been told to stay away. Is this something we should know about? No. He's perfectly harmless, but he's troubled. Nothing you should lose any sleep over. Speaking of which, Laura here absolutely insists on spurning our hospitality for a night under the stars. Where's the best spot to pitch the tent? Oh, definitely the dingle. Down by the river. Hold on, girls. You just spared my poor, long-suffering a whole heap of extra laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how everyone reacted when Cousin Jim's name came up? I am so happy to be inside a thin layer of nylon while Heathcliff's out there stalking the countryside. Martin says he's harmless. Martin's in a house. You seem to be getting on well with Chris. Is he the artist? Hmm. He says he's always on the lookout for life models. Oh, I'd watch him. No, no, I don't think that was what was on his mind. Not with his wife sitting right there. Oh, I don't know. These artistic types. <laughs> While Titian was mixing Rose Madder, his model reclined on a ladder. Her position to Titian suggested coition, so he ran up the ladder and adder. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's you he wants to paint.
The last person that fell in this river turned up three days later in a mile downstream. Dead? Upsetting for you, I know. But I can tell you this. One way or another, this was a tragedy waiting to happen. If Jim Fraser hadn't topped himself, someone around here would have murdered him. Why on earth would you say that? He was a loner. He was a bit strange. And he made it his life's mission to rub people up the wrong way. You asked George Hamilton Teed. George who? Hamilton Teed, editor of the Lives and Observer. He could fill his letters page ten times over with the stuff he got from our gym. If it wasn't for the law of libel. Look, I know it's a bit of a bad time for you. Can I have a quick word? I was at a breakfast meeting in Chambers. Have they found any sign of him yet? They're saying he could fetch up anywhere down river. I'll get away as soon as I can. You know, Warwick Jardine. You mentioned compassionate leave. He has to reach for a dictionary. Well, there's nothing you can do for Jim anyway. Martin. I've got to go. I'll call you tonight. Bye, love. Are you going to take the day off? School's closed for half term. Do you want us to carry on with the garden? Oh, Lord, yes. Nothing changes there. You'll have some help with the heavy work. Apparently, Jim wrote to the local newspaper complaining about everyone and everything. All of it unprintable. Well, everyone needs a hobby. <laughs> this was more like an obsession. I think he saw himself as the conscience of the village. You're letting this get to you. Well, what do you expect? You didn't see the look he gave me. Oh, and the policeman said that if Jim hadn't thrown himself in the river when he did, he... Oh. Ladies. Oh. I think it's our labour force. Cool and Luke and the gang. <laughs> Not going to eat you. Not here in broad daylight, anyway. It's all very well for an ex-copper. You have experience with lawbreakers. But if one of them tried to make a run for it? But there's no wooden horse, and Steve McQueen himself couldn't get a motorbike over that wall. Well, he's not going to be much of an obstacle. Don't be misled by our Mr. Coots. He's like a coiled spring. Hello. Would you like me to introduce the boys? Huxton Rhymer, MP. Ring any bells? Oh. George Marsden Plummer. An example to us all. If you're going to burn down a building and claim from five different insurance companies, make sure you put the claim forms in the right envelopes. You look familiar. I'm Rupert Waldo. Celebrity chef. You may have seen my show on the Home and Kitchen channel. You didn't poison someone on air, did you? A fraud, I'm afraid. Those uh, recipe books with my name on them didn't write a single one of them. They put you in jail for that? Well, plus a small matter of misstated profits in the Inland Revenue. So, what are you all doing here? Oh, we are on loan to Mr. Fraser from Bleakmoor Grange. He's done a deal with the governor. He has an eye for a bargain, Mr. Fraser. I'll bet he got you cheap. Um, any chance of a look at a plan? There's been a, a building here that doesn't appear on the original plan. Ah, um, now this was the Victorian chapel. As ugly a piece of jerry building as ever spoiled a garden. It had been a ruin for years. We spent the last three weeks loading up stones for carting away. Well, we'll have to um, dig out the foundations and make the ground good before we can recreate the Elizabethan design. When a judge said ten years, he never mentioned hard labour. Is this a problem? I am kidding. We're all volunteers. You're not the only ones who want to see this garden restored, you know. Have you done this sort of thing before? Best window box display, Kettlehampton Flower Show, last year. Runners-up, best garden in a 
small enclosed yard. They'd have given us best hanging basket, but they wouldn't let us have a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you make of these holes? We've been seeing them all over. Oh. I didn't know moles brought their own spades. Hmm. Maybe that's why Jim was sneaking into the garden. Digging in the chapel ruins for some ancient family treasure? Hmm. Have they found Jim? Nobody's found anything. Look, I know you're very comfortable here, but would you mind awfully staying with me in the house tonight? Martin can't get back until morning. Well, if you insist. Come on, Rosemary. We can't let Suzanne down. Oh. oh. Enjoy it while you can. Oh, I will, I will. Toby, Tim, back into bed right now and stay there. Mummy's got friends round. <laughs> as long as they stay upstairs after eight o'clock, that's all the victory I ask for. Ah, oh, who's joining us? Gwyn. You met her yesterday. She's my best friend in the village. And she was Martin's first girlfriend, I know. He tells everyone. And then he tells them not to mention it to me. Oh, bless him. Cheers. <clears throat> Whoever it is, I've had enough for one day. They might have found him. Well, that's the last thing I want to think about. By the way, I stopped by and fed Jim's chickens on the way over. Oh, thanks. OK. Has anybody any idea what made him do it? Nobody was that close to him. Nobody wanted to be. Oh, there'd be so much to do. There's the whole house to clear. We don't even know that he's dead yet. No, bless you for hoping, but you don't know the rocks and rapids downstream. He didn't get out before that. He didn't get out. Why did Martin have to warn him off? Jim could never appreciate the fine line between being a welcome guest and a trespasser. Gwyn. What? Well, look at the number of times Martin caught him on the property. Well, you saw for yourselves. Bear in mind, she's here on her own with the children all week. Oh, that'll be fun. Oh, I told her to call by after work if she needed a home. Darling. Only three tables and the tips were lousy. Do you want anything to eat? Oh, Chef made me some chips. What were you talking about? Uh, I'll give you one guess. Well, I saw Jim hanging around here on Friday night. When? When I was walking to work. He was up there on the lane outside the gates. I reckon he didn't want me to see him posting one of his letters. You mean one of the letters he sent to the local paper? Look, Jim was harmless. He could have a nasty mind when it came to certain people. Uh, Gwyn, please! <sighs> what about some acidic fertiliser? See what I've got here.
Jim's body in the river. Martin's just been to identify it. Just stand up, say what you saw, and sit down. That's all there is to it. Morning. Good morning. 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 Rosemary, I think I ought to warn you. Do you know who the coroner for the Lyveden Borough is? No. Well, technically, it's supposed to be me. But when there's a clash of interest, what happens is... Surely Martin can't be expected to preside over his own cousin's inquest. No, of course not. When something like this happens, they swap duties with the part-timer from the next borough. Oh, well, why would that be a problem for us? Worry, Jardine. You're joking. The body was washed downriver and was retrieved from the weir at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning. It was in a very poor condition. But Mr Martin Fraser was able to identify his cousin at the scene. And the reason for that poor condition being? All the rocks and stones. It's a very fast-moving river. Our pathologist said it was the battering that killed him. Thank you, Constable Stewart. I'd now like to hear from Miss Rosemary Boxer. I saw James Fraser out on the stepping stones. He seemed to be waiting for something. Uh, he looked straight at me for a moment, and then he just let himself fall into the water. Did he struggle or cry out? No, he was carried away in a matter of seconds. So, in effect, you were the last person to see him alive? Miss Boxer? I thought I saw him again at the Tuesday market. It was only for a second, and, and I couldn't be sure, but it isn't a face that I would quickly forget. Miss Boxer, I want you to think very carefully about what you're telling us. I thought I saw him, but I couldn't swear to it. Miss Boxer, this is a coroner's court. You are swearing to it. In that case, I would have to say that I was probably mistaken. Thank you. You can forget it now. It's over. Anything to say about the suicide verdict, Miss Boxer? Sure. Thank you. Well, he might have waited for an answer. He's a journalist. He can make up his own. You poor thing. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. You mustn't take any of my awful summing up personally. Hey, anyone can have a wild and irrational flight of fancy at any time. I know I can. Thank you. I, um, I wondered if you had a chance to mention you-know-what to you-know-who. What? About posing. Shocked all I can see the, the actual event. No, I don't think she's interested. Oh. No, I'm sorry, Martin. But if Warwick Jardine hadn't put me on the spot, I wouldn't even have mentioned it. You can see what I'm getting at, though, can't you? The last thing I want is Suzanne and the kids being spooked when I'm not here. I'm not saying that they're going to meet their dead Uncle Jim on the doorstep in the moonlight. I saw him dead. You saw him die. What are you suggesting, Rosemary? Some kind of funny business? She was under oath, Martin. She had to say what she believed she saw. I'll tell you what. Do this, and you'll be doing me a big favour at the same time. Go to Jim's cottage. Sort out his bloody animals for me. You have my permission to snoop, sneak, and crawl all over the place. And if you find anything that smacks of dodgy business, tell Constable Stewart, tell the world. But most of all, tell me, because I want to be the first to know. As if this isn't embarrassing enough. I am serious. Jim was my cousin, but we grew up like brothers. He was the best friend a boy could ask for. It broke my heart to see how he went as he got older. How do you think it felt to watch him turn into the village nutter? Martin! No, that's what he was. But that was not the Jim that I knew. 
The gym that I knew is here. The man that you saw was a stranger to me. I don't know what pushed him over the edge, but it only put him in a kinder place. Perhaps we should discuss this again when we're all a bit less worked up. Rosemary. I don't believe you. Well, you can't expect Martin to move chickens and a goat in the family Peugeot. You know what I'm talking about. Constable Stewart said that if Jim Fraser hadn't topped himself, somebody around here would have murdered him. Well, what if somebody has? He still wouldn't be alive and walking round the market. Unless the Jim we saw in the garden wasn't Martin's cousin, but someone pretending to be him. Why? Because the real cousin Jim was already dead and in the river. What's your experience with goats? None. Chickens? Only in soup or sandwich form. Gwyn says she's been popping around to feed them. Poor things. Lost your daddy. What? Oh. So sure. I'm sorry. Why would anyone murder Jim and then pretend to be him just to chuck himself in the river? So everyone would assume it was suicide when Jim's actual body turned up downstream. Bearing all the marks of a murder victim? No, not necessarily. You'd have a hard time sorting out the injuries after the riverbed pinball. Why don't you try and find some picture ID? Surely that would settle the question once and for all. Help me look. No, oh, I shall be establishing a rapport with a goat. What will they think of next? You never travel, you don't need a passport. And if you didn't have a car... Not one picture of him, though. Not anywhere in the house. Well, people keep pictures of other people. That doesn't have to be significant. Hmm. Unless it means that somebody went through the place before us, I'd call that significant. You heard, Martin. His landlord's key was the only spare. Strange. Even Martin didn't have a picture. And speaking of Martin, he seems to be the only person around here who doesn't get a mention in Jim's letters to the press. I wonder if they're all here. What have you got there? Carbon copies. You, you never took them from the cottage. Well, I'm only doing what Martin told me to. Oh, oh listen to this one. She has access to all those drugs at the hospital, but someone ought to ask her what she's hoarding in that bridge. Who? Katie Stevens, the anaesthetist. Drugs. Maybe Jim saw something there that could have got him killed. Katie? Hmm. One of us has a perfect excuse to nose around the Stevens house. Who would that be? But I'm not the one a husband wants to paint. You see? Nothing much got past him, did it? 
She's growing up a terrible flirt, but then look at who her father was. Which one's that? The one about Gwyn's daughter. Fern. Mm. Now, just remember, if you see him start mixing Rose Madder... <laughs> Is that the face you're going to pose with? Don't care how charming he is. The kit stays on. Hello? Mrs. Time. Uh, be with you in about um, ten minutes. You want to find the kitchen, grab a coffee? Thrud, the barbarian. Reprinting the whole series with new covers. You know, they're all written by a psychiatrist. I'll uh, leave you to it, then. Oh, I'm feet. Oh, hey, if my sergeant saw that. All right, you two, settle down. Come on, work to do. Problems. Ah. It's for the children's little ailments. I make it up myself. Do you know how homeopathy works? Uh, you take a heavily diluted form of something that would cause the same symptoms as the disease. Ah, you've done a study. Just what I've read in magazines. Of course, when they set the dilution levels, they failed to realise you need to drink 8,000 gallons of the stuff to get one molecule of the additive. So then they came up with the memory of water. I was never that good at science. They say it doesn't matter if the additive's long vanished. The water remembers it. Now, when I make up medicine for the children, I just take that one stage further. I simply show the additive to the water. And the water imagines it. You don't believe any of this, do you? I do believe in the placebo effect. The power of suggestion. And I don't think plain water ever did anyone much harm. Unless your name was Jim Fraser. Could the power of suggestion make someone kill himself? I doubt it. Unless the person was weak and vulnerable, and deep in his heart really needed to die. Chris is ready for you now. Bye, Fern. Don't forget your coffee. Thanks. OK, just wrap it round yourself. Fling it across. Like oh. this. Ooh. Very Scarlet Pimpernel. <clears throat> What's the book called? The King's Last Mistress. Oh, sounds racy. Have you read it? Hmm. Now, can you look surprised? Really surprised? Well, I'm not used to this. Are you here to work or just waste my time? I beg your pardon. Good. Excellent. What, what, More like that. Come on, you trollop. Let's work. <laughs> Good, good, good. More like that, I'll throw you out of here. Oh. Shock! Horror! Oh. Shock! Horror! Mr. Teed! Mr. Teed! I love it when women chase after me. Tell me what I can do for you. 
I was wondering if you were running a picture of Jim Fraser alongside the inquest report. Of course. Ah, oh, he's barely ten years old at this. Is there nothing a bit more recent? Alas, that's all Martin could give me. Is there nothing on file? <laughs> Miss Boxer! This newspaper stays afloat on one simple principle. Whenever there's an event in one of the villages, I turn up and photograph the crowd. If those people buy the newspaper, I break even. If some of them buy a copy of the picture, I'm in profit. James Fraser, I'm sorry to say, was never a welcome face in any crowd. He sent you a lot of letters, though. Big part of his problem. Did you print any of them? I like my house too much. <laughs> They did look pretty contentious. <laughs> well, I couldn't say. I got to the point I dropped them in the shredder without reading them. So you wouldn't even know if any of the gossip concerned his cousin, Martin. <laughs> but, you know, you've got to understand something about the setup in Lifton. Everybody in this entire valley depends on Martin Fraser and his family's estate in some way or another. They rent from him, sell to him, they... Working trades would have vanished without him. He keeps school open, the, the developers out. So what you're telling me is even if there was any scandal, you'd only lose readers if you printed it. What I'm telling you is you'd go a long way to find a better man. Don't suppose I could um, put you down to uh, my picture, hmm? This week's page three. You're really good. I'll say it a bit louder so the missus can hear. I mean it. You could be in galleries, you could be stinking rich. I am stinking rich. I've got the overdraft to prove it. I've read some of these. Well done. Do you often use people from the village? Always. I like to use real faces. I've had just about everyone through here. Including Jim Fraser? There is a limit. What do you mean? All due deference to Martin, but I wouldn't have that cousin of his anywhere near my house. Why not? He tried to make trouble for me and mine. God rest his soul. I shall say no more. Um, who was the model for that one? Oh, I can't recall. Yes, Martin. Yes, you just left within the last minute. Now, the thing is, I told her the letters had been destroyed. So what should I do? Do you know if Jim kept copies of what he wrote? It sounds to me like, like she's had her hands on them. Mm. Okay, no problem. I'm doing it now.